there. Canada Center is indeed ready for the aforementioned game six. As the Flyers and Leafs have at it one more time. In that tonight, Robert Esch. Yes, he's all right, everybody. A little bit worried after that first period. He was dizzy, but took the precautionary move to not play him the rest of the way, and he'll get the start tonight. And Eddie Deke Belfour, he's the veteran. He'll have that game, game five in the back of his mind. It's all done. This is a different game for him tonight. You had a look at the officials. The puck immediately goes out of play on the Philadelphia dump in, and so we have an early opportunity to tell you about the keys to the game. Well, it's the big story will be Belfour. Can he bounce back after allowing six in game five? And Robert Esch, he left for a different reason, but he's back in the nets tonight. Well, the Flyers need to match the Leafs' intensity in this game tonight. And uh, Leach and McCabe, get on them quickly. Sometimes it's very difficult to recover from bad games. That's not the easiest thing to do. Flyers start Keith Primo, Bronco Radovojevic, and John LeClaire as a trio. That's LeClaire getting the puck to the Toronto line and pumping the puck into the Leafs zone. Leafs making an early change and hopping over the boards is the captain, Matt Sundin. He's flanked by Darcy Tucker and Brian Leach. Ragnarsson bumped by Tucker and taken to the wall after he missed the puck originally. It's Hanzus getting the puck out to center. LeClaire and Sundin come together. Sundin the glove up near the face of LeClaire. Play is stopped. Not on a penalty outside. call, just an offside infraction. You know, you really got to watch Sundin. He gets away with murder. He plays a lot like Bobby Olink. A lot of the stuff coming after the play. There are your scratches. The Flyers have Dennis Seidenberg in the lineup with Malakoff out because he got his bell rung. Did a Mackey's up. As insurance, he obviously is sitting. Patrick Sharp remains out of the lineup. Into the lineup, as we mentioned, is Seidenberg. Sammy Kapanen also expected to see some time on defense. Now there were changes on the fly by the Flyers as they're uh, trying to get Primo's line off when he's against Markov and get ready for the Sundin line. Here's Gagne getting the puck into the Toronto zone. Wraps up Carberly. Gagne to Radovojevic for the shot off the side of the net. Simone Gagne was a major force in game five for Philadelphia with three assists. And also some good hard play along the walls right there. He tucks the puck deep into the Toronto zone. Kyle Pilash is back. Pilash seeing his first action of this postseason. He's in for the injured Ken Glee. Glee lost to a knee injury. He's out for the remainder of the playoffs. And so losses for both squads from game five. That's a hand pass called on Philadelphia. You know, Pilash is a big guy, six foot three, 215 pounds, but he's also a guy that hasn't got a lot of experience back there. Interestingly enough, he missed a lot of time last year with a heart ailment and they never ever found out what it was. That'd be a little scary to me, but the bottom line is he gets an opportunity tonight with Klee going out, and uh, one thing about Pilas, he's not the greatest skater in the world, which be, might be to the advantage of the Flyers. Flyers win the neutral zone draw, and Ragnarsson will wind it deep into the Toronto zone, a line of Keith Primo, Radovan Somic, and Donald Brashear out for Philadelphia. Brashear tucking the puck down low, penalty upcoming. It looks as though it's on Philadelphia. Rashir's now tied up with Aki Berg. Interference to call. Berg takes a tumble. And Steve Wacom gesturing as he comes over. The Flyers want to know what the penalty call is here. Well, it's uh, against Keith Primo. He threw his, his body at uh, Pilosh when Pilosh did not have possession of the puck. And so that has been called. Watch this. Or Marchman, rather. Right? Excuse me. He nailed him. So that is. An interference call. So just 143 in the Leafs get the game's first power play as the Flyers captain sits. Well, this is something you don't want to have happen. You don't want to have any penalty. <laughs> you just don't want to have to kill penalties against the Toronto Maple Leafs in this game. I mean, they got too much firepower. They have too many all-stars on the other side to be able to keep them with that man advantage. The number's not impressive in these playoffs and only two for 24 in this series, but they have had their share of chances. For sure, Robert Esch has been very good when the Flyers have been short. And it Leach penetrates the zone and gets the puck to Sundin. And those are your two biggest fears right there, Leach and Sundin. But they have others, McGillney being one of them. He's wrapped up. The headlock there applied by Kim Janssen, and the puck cleared by Alexei Jamnov. It was very interesting. The Flyers had three less power plays than the Leafs, and each team has had 26 shots, and the Flyers have two more chances than the Leafs. So it's been fairly close as far as power play and penalty killing. Leach to Roberts. He lost the puck as he got in across the line. Ragnarsson a chance to clear, and he does get it out to the red line. Leach flagging it down there. 
And he'll go across to Brian McCabe. McCabe coming off with a minus five performance. I'll give him credit for this. He did not hide from the media. He answered all the questions. Was a stand-up guy after the worst game of his career. He said it was the worst game he's ever had as a professional. Now remember, this guy was a number one draft pick. All sorts of talent. You know, the first couple of shifts are very important to him. If oh. he starts coughing that puck up, making some bad plays, that could affect the rest of the game for him. Markov jabs the puck away from Neuendijk. Jamnov did not get much on the clearing attempt, but on a second try, he moves it out to center and moves past Leach. He'll go across ice with a bouncing pass that's tipped by McCabe, gathered by the Leafs, but offside is called before they can move back with it. Uh, we saw what uh, McCabe, trouble handling the puck, making some ill-advised passes. Uh, Primo beat him in the shorthanded situation. And, you know, McCabe was quoted as saying, I put that game behind me. Well, it's not that easy to do. You know, and I think if, uh, if you were playing against him, you would dump every puck in his corner and make him make plays. Make him think about it. Thomas Cabrillet, who began this series getting a lot of the criticism for giveaways and problems with the puck. Got it ahead to Neuendijk, fan on the shot, but neither Tamander nor Markov could come up with it. And now it sits in the corner, and here's Reichel. Reichel for Darcy Tucker, back to Reichel as they're set up. Robert Reichel, he was scratched, healthy scratch. Got the puck to Tucker, and his side angle shot stopped by Esch. They're saying Reichel did not play in Philadelphia on Sunday, but he's right back in as Pat Quinn has made a host of changes trying to get his team back. The winning throw. That was a huge decision for Pat Quinn. He had mentioned it because, you know, pulling Reichel up because he had played so well, especially at the killing of the penalties. Putting Neuendijk in obviously is huge too. Tucker centers and it's poked by Roberts, but up over the net and over the glass and out of play. And talking to Robert Ashton about the game five when he got pulled after the first round, he didn't get pulled. But bottom line is he couldn't see the puck. He got dizzy. He started seeing stars. And then he said, well, I must have got a concussion for when I got hit in the shot in the game before. What he did do is he went over and he started eating raisins, figuring his blood sugar was down. And it ended up being just dehydration. Well, first 19 minutes, he didn't have to do anything because he didn't face a shot. Yeah. <laughs> no. And then he let the one in. He's <laughs> got a shot here on that power play, but just the one. And the Flyers are back to full strength. So they dodge that early bullet. Here is Janssen across to Ragnarsson. Ragnarsson's pass all the way across for Branko Radovojevic. He'll lay it ahead for Keith Primo. Primo centering as he takes the big hit from Kilger. And the puck is chopped back out to center. Well, Chad Kilger has uh, kind of gone unnoticed as far as the hitting department is concerned. Well, he's not going unnoticed here as he just framed Janssen who's shaken up. Kim Janssen shaken up, going to the bench. And not sure exactly what's injured, but he is holding the right hand. So we'll keep an eye on that. Here is Berg. Ahead to Panikarovsky. And it's Pitkin and knocking it down. Now they look at Hanson as the puck comes down low. The shot, save it, rebound shot. And that either hit Hanson the post and stayed out. Why is there a whistle? Evidently the referee lost sight of that puck. But it did not go in. Kim Janssen got drilled by Kilger along the boards. His head went face first right up into the glass. And he's being tended to right now by athletic trainer John Worley. You know, the official looked right at it and uh, just looked the other way after it happened. He was not going to call the penalty. Not to obviously demean the injury he has there, but I'm actually happy to see that it's a cut because I thought he was holding on to his hand on the bench. And obviously that would be a huge concern. He can handle, of course, the cut to the top of it. Or it easy for me to say, obviously, but he is a hockey player. Here's Brian Leach. A shot deflected. And they went high and wide. Leafs, as expected, have come out flying. The Flyers have got to match the effort. Here's McGillney down low. Neuendijk rounding the net. Neuendijk back out to the point. Leach a shot. Save X. Rebound. Flyers finally get to it. And Ronick will get it ahead to Jamnoff. Jamnoff in the middle. That pass knocked away. McCabe to Leach. Back to McCabe. First three shots of the game belong to Toronto, and they're picking up the pace as we move along. Remember, and we say this all the time, the first 10 minutes, first 15 minutes of this game is huge because you know the Leafs are going to come at you, so you got to just hold on. There's McCabe up the wall as he takes a hit. Got the puck to Ty Domi. Domi across right on the tape to Reichel, who whips from center. The stick saved by Esch. Now Reichel on the board. Pushed to the wall by Tanander, but not controlled. Here's Domi. Domi stopped by Markov. Back along the boards, it's Domi, side angle shot, save, Esch gathers the rebound, and then gets a snow shower from Ty Domi. Well, every hit the Leafs throw, the Flyers have to match that. 
And Donald Brashear is in there with good reason. Domi went into a slide giving Esch that snow shower, and Brashear wants to let him know he noticed. Don't worry, Esch gave him a little shot right in the head when he got up, so that's why Domi was really out. See, he's still yelling at Robert Esch. And when you get the pressure put against you, as the Leafs are doing right now, boy, a big focus comes on your goaltender, and, and Robert Esch has battled. That shot there rang right off the goalpost. But the, uh, the Leafs are, are certainly attacking, and they're, they're getting guys in front of Esch. Draw here will be to his right. Five stops already for a first-time playoff starter in these plans. Hitkin is ridden by Roberts. And these are the key battles right here. And the Flyers, by getting numbers, win the battle, but then Leclerc is run into, did not get the puck out of the zone. Elosh with that hit on Leclerc. Here's Sammy Kapanen. Kapanen is playing defense in this shift. Remo Leclerc and Recchi are up front. It's Kapanen and Ragnuson in the back line. Here's Tucker moving in. I see Tucker lost control. Ragnuson control. And Roberts hammers him. And then Kapanen pasted on what could have been boarding on Sundin. The other way goes Ragnuson. Ragnuson in across the line. He'll wind and blast. First save of the game for Belfour is a shaky one as he just batted it down with a glove. Now Cabrera ahead. Tucker is checked, wrapped up. And Somic will make that Leclerc with the puck, and he'll just send it deep. You know, this is what we saw in games three and four, the tactic of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Every time you have an opportunity, make sure that you finish the check. Take the body every chance you get. Sure didn't do much of that in Philadelphia, though, did they? No. <laughs> Two-line pass. We'll be back. Leafs, five shots. The Flyers, one. Primo will take this draw against Antropov. And the Flyers gain control, but linesman didn't like the way the puck was dropped or the way the... Players were aligned, and so they'll do it over again. Primo gets tossed, and Gagne has to step in. And the Flyers still win the draw. Ragnuson a shot. Save Belfort. Juggles it around. It's loose in front. And the Leafs take care of the Flyers there, and it's Antropop the other way. So Belfort's had two shots, and he hasn't looked particularly sharp with either of them. The puck goes back down into the Philadelphia zone. Gagne battling. Kilger in there. Belak in there. Ragnuson shoved Belak down and gets the puck. Marcus Ragnuson. Radovojevic, he's lost his helmet in a scrum, and he'll wind the puck deep into the Toronto zone. Marksman across for Aki Berg. Berg up the wall for Bielak, and he'll just steer to center. Johnson hit by Roberts. Amati will drop it back to Ragnarsson. Ragnarsson's pass to Ronick. Ronick in the middle looking for Amati, but Amati beat the puck into the zone offside. Oh, for Eddie Balfour, you, you let in six goals, and you begin to question your ability, and, you know, in the nets. Now, he's always had a history of bouncing back and, and making or playing a strong game the next night. But look at that, a huge rebound, and it was sitting there for uh, Gagne to knock in. At least, fortunately, their defensemen were there to clear it up for uh, Eddie Belfer on that play because you don't want to let one in like that. Just over seven and a half minutes into this first period. Sundin has the puck into the Philadelphia zone. Tucker brings Markov. Roberts and Commander now in the battle. Tucker for that puck and he got it to Roberts back to McCabe and just wind it deep and there's Tucker. Tucker centering Roberts taken off the play by Tamander and the puck goes all the way down. What an outstanding play by Tamander. All he does is lift the stick. We say it all the time. Nullify the man stick and he did a great job on Roberts. That was offside pass Looked there. Looked like a two line two pass line, but yeah. Ray Scampanello said no. Ray Scampanello in his final year is a linesman one of the best. And perhaps Last time, get a look at Ray Scavin. Although, quite possible he'll work deep into these playoffs as well as the puck rolls to Domi. Domi drops it back along for Fitzgerald. He lost it back to the point, though. The shot safe. Rebound, Fitzgerald. And Esch got a piece of that offering, and then it went off the outside of the net. Now, Hantus gets to Markov. Markov to pass to Pitkin, and Pitkin will just clear it to center. Leclerc all tied up there. Does manage to finesse to get into the lead zone. Hantus barrels over Domi as Belfort comes out of his net and gives up the puck to Pilaj. And the Leafs will move it out. Fitzgerald overtaken from behind by Primo, but Pilaj is there. Across for Cabrile. Cabrile will carry in. Cabrile centering it in front. Hit wide. And then it went up and out of play, and there will be a faceoff. Leafs are driving the net here early on. Now that's one thing that the, the Flyers have to be very aware of. It's the man with the puck looking for somebody going in front of Esch for the deflection. They've had four or five opportunities like that, but just have not connected. 
This is just a simple shot for the net, but Fitzgerald, actually from the point, Fitzgerald, you see he's got an opportunity because he's a right-hand shot. So he's looking for that far corner, went to the near side, and that was the redirection you just saw right there. That's just going post to post in the butterfly, getting those pads right up against each post, trying to cover as much space as possible. All four of the game's first six chances belong to Toronto as Elash. Run at by Primo, has a word or two for the Flyer captain as he got the puck into the Philadelphia zone. Ragnarsson to Janssen, Janssen to Radovojevic. Picked up his first postseason goal in game five, also added an assist. Gagne in after the puck, bodied his man but got his stick tied up. And Antropov has to go off his stick to set a ice. There's Janssen. Pass across, Flyers nearly had too many men on the ice as Primo was simply waiting to get into the bench. A turnover by Cabrera, Hansu stepping in front. And never got to the slot as the puck bounced back the other way. Here's Primo. Make that for Shear to Somic. Somic's weak shot went wide. Somic back after the puck. Banks it and left it for Brashear. To Hansus. Back to Somic. Cutting in front shot. He scores! Radovan Somic with a beauty. And the Flyers lead the Leafs 1 0 as Somic scores for a case of Tasty Cakes. Well, the Flyers have done it again. In every game but one, they have scored the game's first goal. And that was a lot of good cycling. And it's amazing. Uh, that when the Flyers did cycle and end up with a puck, how much time Somic had to come in front of the net, and he, he made absolutely no mistake in depositing it in. Watch the play right here by Brish, or, uh, Hansus. Pilosh fell, trying to reach for it, and uh, Somic elevated that pretty oh, good. Oh, all it is is a mini two-on-one, and Pilosh was the guy in the middle, being the one. But nice touch pass right back to the middle, and Somic being a right-hand shot, he just looked for that top corner, and as Dorney said, I mean, that's what they call top shelf, gang. That's what that's all about. That's the penthouse. That's what? The penthouse. The penthouse, all right. Uh, Somic's first of these playoffs, second career. Hansus for sure the assist. 9.55 the time. As Belfort will set the puck up behind the net for Brian Leach. Well, Leach looking to outlet that one off the skate of Radovojevic, gathered by Tamander. He finds Markov. It's going to be very interesting how to track the defense changes for tonight for the Flyers because Kapanen is going to go back there the odd time, and Seidenberg still hasn't seen a ship. There's Markov to Gagne at the red line. He was stationary. He'll just backhand in as the Flyers change lines. And Brian McCabe is back to pick up the puck. Brian McCabe with a pass that Domi could not hang on to. Domi and Pitkinen joust along the boards. Pitkinen stick tied up. So Hansus will help out his teammate. Play it all the way down. No icing here as Belfour. Drops the puck off for Brian Marshman. Marshman couldn't clear. Leclerc kept it in. Marshman lost his stick. The puck to Recchi. Recchi got it in off Belfour and then bounced out into the slot. Domi dropped it back. Turnover. Hansus the steal. And he's pumped behind the neck by Marshman. And the puck rolls ahead, and here's Reichel moving the other way. Reichel will send it into the right of Esch. Kapanen and Domi come together. The puck slides toward the slot, but good coverage by Philadelphia. Hansus the other way. Hansus stepped into by Berg. Continues on and pokes the puck into the lead zone. The Leafs are not only hitting, they are going for heads here early on. A lot of high checks. Boy, I thought Marchmont really had the elbows up right into the head of Hansus there. That's icing as Ragnarsson goes back. Despite all the Leafs hitting, it's Somic who has the only goal. Flyers lead early. Somic, the 15th different flyer to score a goal in these playoffs. Give you an idea of the scoring balance and depth that they have shown. Here's Wade Bielak, the wrist shot that goes wide of Robert Esch. Rolls ahead, good hit on Ronick. Cabrillet keeps the puck in. Ragnarsson cross-checked by Sundin. Bielak tries to pinch, but the puck drifts out to center right. Yeah, the Leafs are, uh, are really reckless in their hitting. They're, they're challenging everybody all over the ice. By the same token, they're getting themselves out of position. Sundin barrels into Oh, that's an obvious rough by Sundin, not called. Put the elbow and the glove right in Ragnarsson's face, but the referee looked at it and said, that's okay. Play what did stopped. I tell you about Sundin? Right, yeah. I'm telling you, he's got the most active hands. And if we could show this, because if, and this goes back to what a penalty is. It works at both ends of the ice. I don't care. Just make the call. Watch the hands. Make the hit. That's fine. Now watch this. Yeah. Oh, the camera turned away. I think the camera went with the eyes of the referee. And Let's take a look. Let's have a look. Watch. There's the hit. I'm okay with that. Here we go. Now right there. That's, a, that's what they call an elbow to the head, King. And Steve Walkham standing looking at it. Another shot to the head now, of let's just, let's just get through this first 15 minutes. That's the key. They're hitting. 
Rashir and Belak were wrapped up. Buck into the field of his own Tamander, overtaken by Belak, who throws him down in centers. It was loose. Handrapump was there, but Esch held his ground, and now it's Brashear the other way. And he'll send one in off the stick of Bell for Somic. Pinned by Leak, rolls it around behind the net. Referee got in the wrong guy's way. Brashear, the primo, hammers Belak with a hit in the corner as the puck pops out to center. Oh. Rashir just ran through referee Kevin Pollock. Remember, uh, Keith Primo does not shy away from contact, and he instigates most of it. And the thing is, he does it at home as well as on the road. On Susan Leach wrapped up. Puck bounces to McCabe. When we talk about the Leafs hits, Keith Primo's got four hits in this game already, and there's six fifths remaining in the first period. That is not icing as Janssen gets to it. His pass to Brashir tips it out through center. Marshman will give to Berg. Berg fluttered it off the glove of Hanzus. Berg got it back and dropped to Marshman. 35-year-old defenseman gets to Neuendijk, and he'll wind it in. Ash will stop it behind that. He only forces him to play it up the wall to Leclerc, but Leclerc was checked, could not move it out. Puck fortuitously bounces back to John, and he'll go across, hoping for Recky. Instead, it's Berg tipping to the Philadelphia line. Panikarovsky's after it there. His pass to McGillney turning. McGillney to Panikarovsky. Panikarovsky back to the point. Marshman, a shot. That goes wide of everything. Flyers can't find the puck. It's McGillney centering. Hanzus couldn't clear. Hanzus a second try, couldn't clear again. And Esch is without a stick. Here's a shot. And that one, Esch never saw it. Ricochets up high, drops behind the net. Hanzus has no idea where it is. It comes out in front, and here's Marshman. Flyers back in their heels right here. They need to get it out of the zone, and John LeClaire does. He blocks the pass and then moves up with it. And LeClaire will let fly with a wrister that is easily stopped by Belfort. What a great play by Hanzus. He just had the patience to go back and said it's better to get the goalie the stick. That puck bounces free. Here's Cabral ahead to wait for Mate to get onside and did gave to Domi. Domi the shot, Savage! And the rebound ends up back behind the net. Kapanen looking for it there. Primo comes back to get to it. His pass for Ganyu jams it out through center and all the way down. And Radovojevic is steamrolling here. Nearly canceled the icing, but Cabrillet got there first. Now the Philadelphia Flyers, as uh, you read that, have the, scored the game's first goal the most in these playoffs. Toronto second. Yeah, Toronto is 7 for 7 in their series against Ottawa. They've only done it once here in this series as the Flyers continue to get the early jump, and they'll to take advantage of that early jump here in game six. Off the faceoff, it's make, or make that Pilash rolling it back around behind. Antropov stepped into by Primo. And Primo stays with the puck, poking it to Radovojevic. Radovojevic in heavy traffic, turning with it, and stuffing it around to the other side. Pitkinen will catch up to it, and then Bilak will catch up to him with a big hit along the wall. And Bilak is crunched by Primo, who continues to hit everything that moves in a blue jersey. Now Radovojevic. Forced by Kabale in center. Kapanen falls down. Hilger leans on him. Back to help out is Alexei Zhamnov. Across for Pitkinen. And the rookie defenseman will give it back. To his finished friend, Sammy Kapanen. Hilger with a hit on Kapanen. Well, after he had that was pretty late. that pass. And now ahead it is to Zhamnov to Ronick. Steam rolling through center. Ronick getting a step. He's hooked. Still has it. Shot blocked. Rebound. Ronick shot. Score! Amani was there, but I think it went in by itself. And the Flyers with Jeremy Roenick and a brilliant rush take a 2-0 lead. The acceleration of Jeremy Roenick, blue line to blue line, makes this play. It became a two-on-one very quickly because of the speed. But the key here is not the shot, but the rebound, the replay of being able to get the second opportunity. Bang, stay with it, and then just gets the shot on net and catches Belfort moving from right to left. You know, sometimes, Coach, when you're on one skate the way pre or, uh Ronick was there, it's tough to keep your balance, but he is such a graceful skater, and he was able to maintain that balance, and a lot of guys would have skated into the corner after releasing the initial shot. When Ronick stayed in his position, he got it back, and boy, the Flyers have two. Ronick's first of this series, his third of these playoffs, as he just stayed with it, and so now you can feel the tension and pressure in this building on the home team as they trail 2-0. Right now, they just took the crowd right out of it. Oh, absolutely. Boy, it's just all of a sudden a two-man here, and that's why I, I, I kind of like it. All right, watch. There's Ronick on the one skate, follows it, and then it's right through the five-hole. Either that or it just dropped underneath the goal stick. Oh, Betty Bell for it. See, McCabe was the only guy back. Amani was on the other side, so McCabe's got to come and make the play. He's the one that made the shot. Or blocked the shot, rather. So here is Brian Leach for Toronto. Four minutes remaining here in the first period. 
McCabe set it off a stick into the Philadelphia zone. Back is Johnson to get to it. His pass not cleared. Leach to McCabe. He'll wind. His shot was deflected by a flyer and went wide. Hanzus gets to it. And he'll chip it ahead to Somic. Right of Somic from the red line. We'll play it in. Kapanen and Jamnoff will get the assist on that goal by Ronick. Here's Sundin. Getting the puck into the Philadelphia zone. It's rolled around and all the way back out to center ice. This, in three and a half minutes left in this period, this is huge. To get out of this period with a 2 0 lead is going to play a big part in this hockey game. There's Roberts coming in, but his drop pass gobbled up by Recchi. He gets to Markov, and Danny just whips it all the way down off the boards. This will be icing as Marshman goes back for the touch up. It's kind of interesting that uh, Recchi was going into four check and Primo used his stick on the seat of the pants of Recchi to give him more speed to get down there in the four check. And there's your goal scorer, the second uh, for the Flyers tonight's game. Remember in game four, when the Flyers grabbed the lead, Primo had an excellent chance to add that second goal. And he talked about that on the plane ride home. He said, had we gotten that, it might have been a different game. Boy, did Ronick ever go by Leach in that goal. There's Tony Amati with a puck for Philadelphia. Amati, you now the linesman got in his way. And now that leads to McGillney going the other way. Manned on his first pass attempt. And they say the play is offside as it ricocheted around in the Philadelphia line. I mentioned that it was career playoff goal number 50 for Jeremy Roney. I was just watching uh, Tony Amani. He was giving it to the linesman. Get out of the way when you see me coming. Don't stand there. It's hard enough fighting off guys flying all over the other team. And then you got to go after the referee or fight off the referee. Danny Markoff ducking a check in center, stuffing the puck into the Toronto zone. Joe Neuendijk after it, Jamnoff pestering him. Belosh will roll it around to the corner. McGillney is checked. Amati centering off Jamnoff's stick. Trying to stay with it. McGillney there, but now Ronick takes over. Ronick the wrister. Save Belfort. Rebound. Ronick. Janet Belfort. Another save as Ronick is on a mission here. Jamnoff back to Ronick again. It's poke checked away and finally cleared by Toronto. The Flyers have overtaken the Leafs now in shots on goal after the Leafs had six of the first seven in the game. That was huge for Eddie Belfort there on that back to back saves on the stick from the stick of Jeremy Ronick. Cabrera will flutter one deep into the Philadelphia zone. This will be icing as Kapanen goes back. Flyers 2:04 left in this first period have that two-goal lead. What I was going to say is what we talk about Kapanen's importance playing offense, playing defense. I mean, he does it ever kills penalty, plays the point in the power play, plays forward in the power play. But we don't talk about how important it's been for him to be able to help Yoni Pitkin. Remember, Pitkin had to not only fight off the language barrier, but come into a, a, a smaller rink, new experience for him, and he's done a great job. Esch turned it over to Atropov, who centered, but the Flyers in great position. Here's Primo, steamrolling back up, but McCabe got his stick in there to disrupt him. And the puck will roll back to Pitkin, and who gives to Kapanen. And now Yoni will bank that one. Pass to Campano, and McCabe knocks it down at the Toronto line. Wade Bielak in the middle, and getting a step here is Reichel for the shot arm, saved by Esch. And Ragnarsson ahead. Rashir couldn't get it, neither could Somic. And finally, sticking with it was Hanzu, still in the zone. Kapanen will control for Philadelphia back around for Ragnarsson. And he'll give to Sammy. And now it's Ragnarsson, and here comes Reichel. The check on Ragnarsson, who lobs it out and all the way down. And they wave off icing. Ruling Berg could have gotten to that. Berg spun around by Somic as he drops to Marshman as we hit the final minute of play here in the first period. Marshman drills it into the Philadelphia zone. Uh, Fitzgerald back in the lineup after sitting two out as a healthy scratch. Got the puck in the corner. Sundin is checked, but it rolls to Fitzgerald, who gets it back to Sundin. Trying to center. Blocked by Eschen, then whipped out of there by Janssen. And with a dive, Jamnov clears the zone. Flyers making a change as the Leafs go back to get the puck. Ahead it goes to Tucker. Couldn't get it past to Mander, who starts the other way. Commander a pass in the middle to Jamnov quickly to Recchi. Recchi's checked the puck back out to center, so Jamnov will drop it back to Tamander. And he'll give to Markov. Flyers still making changes. Markov lost it in center. Tucker got his stick up on Gagne. Penalty. Penalty coming up on Tucker as he got his stick up high. It caught Simone Gagne. And Tucker will head to the box, and the Flyers will get their first power play of the game. Well, obviously, all the speculation what the Leafs were going to do coming into this one, they were going to be very aggressive. And they have been. They have hit every chance they've got. 
especially in the offensive zone, finishing the checks on the Flyers' defense. Boy, did we see it time after time. But the Flyers have weathered the storm. And that would have been the big key. And I, we had talked about that too. Getting through the first 10, 15 minutes. So you you uh, use up a lot of energy by uh, continuing to nail guys, especially going out of position. You saw the, the high stick there by Darcy Tucker against Simone Gagne. And then when you need that energy or that second level or that second effort to uh, try and come up with some goals, you just don't have it because you've worn yourself out trying to uh, knock the Flyers all over the ice. And it's not working right now. With the top-rated power play still in these playoffs. And a chance to put a three-goal lead up on the board, although they'll have to wait till the second period to begin in earnest. As the horn sounds ending period number one, the Flyers will still have a lot of power play time. Minute 19 seconds remaining to start the second stanza. Jeremy Roenick with his third of the playoffs. Radovan Somic with his first. Robert Esch outstanding between the pipes and the Flyers have a 2-0 lead. The quotes, the few and far between for Robert Esch during these playoffs. He's only talking after games, but uh, he's really enjoying playing here. And you know what? That's an advantage. I mean, this might sound a little strange, but it's an advantage for the Flyers because there's a lot of the players on this team enjoy playing in this building. Kim Janssen winding it in. The Flyers begin this second period on the power play. Chance to apply the hammer here. They have Hanzus up front with Recky and Leclerc. Kapanen and Janssen on the point. This is Kapanen getting the puck to Recky. Recky right out to the line and then carrying it in. He'll give to Hanzus. Hanzus checked by Leach. Spun back out to Kapanen. Right back to Hanzus. Emerging from the wall. Wrist shot. Save. Belfour. He'll squeeze it. And then McCabe a shot to the chops on Leclerc. Well, in game two, the, the Flyers' power play certainly got rolling. And, uh, you know, that's... Uh, can be a lethal weapon for you when you're playing even at five on side. But Mark Recchi, from a bad angle, just put it at the net, and there was Brashear to knock in the rebound. And then how about this jam now? And that was the game winner. McCabe drilling the puck off the boards and all the way down as the Leafs win a defensive zone draw. And Esch will get the puck to Kapanen. Myers have done some damage against the Leafs with the power play. They look to do some more here. Recky winding it in. McCabe and Leclerc engage. The puck to Hanzus. Hanzus snaps it around for Recky. Recky out to Kapanen. He's pressured, so he'll give to Hanzus. Recky will head down low as Hanzus gives it back to Kapanen. Right back to Hanzus. Now Recky whipping that one across. Almost as though he was looking for a bank shot there, and that one just went on through. We're here at the Air Canada Center. Game six of the Eastern Conference semifinals between the Flyers and Leafs. That's us. Along with our great crew here who's done tremendous work getting things ready for the broadcast. Shamnoff moves in and then settles. And Alexei Shamnoff gets it back to Ragnarsson. Right back to Shamnoff. 15 seconds remaining in the power play. He gives to Amani. Amani to Shamnoff! And he was checked just as he went to take the shot. And the lead's clear. See, that's that mini little two-on-one down low. You're going to isolate on the defenseman on that side and try to get him moving a little bit. And once you do that, just go to the net. You'll get the puck back. Power play is over, but here come the Flyers. But Jamnoff lost the puck in his skates. And the Leafs get it back. So, the Leafs able to kill off the Philadelphia power play. It's still a 2-0 hockey game. Look out here, 2-on-1 developing. What a great read by Markov as he steps into Sundin, not allowing him to make a play across the ice. Now it's chipped ahead. Back to the point. Pilash is there. Pilash will roll it deep into the Philadelphia zone. Sundin. Holds off Markov, but Gagne is there, and he hits a steamrolling Primo. Primo turns Berg around, and then Berg comes back to make a diving poke check. A beautiful play there after it appeared as though he was beaten. Sundin, a touch pass for Roberts in center. Roberts harassed by Radovojevic, but moves through him. Tried to center, blocked off by Tamander. Now Roberts gets it back, but his pass knocked down by Primo. Primo ahead. Radovojevic is checked, and Roberts will keep it into Tucker. Tucker spinning. Gives to Sundin. Sundin has a look, centered it in front. Roberts couldn't get a stick on it. And then a good play by Radovojevic to guide the puck out of the zone. Well, for Radovojevic, when the Leafs kept it in, he was up there a little bit too high. And when you get too close to the defenseman, you can't see him. He can keep the puck in the zone. Oh, nearly. Oh, nearly oh. Met on the Whoa. ice on the Leafs, but not called. It did not touch anybody. As Brian McCabe will play it. Pat Quinn's been complaining about the Flyers getting those changes where they have seven or eight men on the ice at a time. Looked like the Leafs that time, Pat, but uh, no call. Danny Markov comes over in a trade when the Flyers need a defenseman. And if you read about him, they'll tell you that he plays with an edge. 
point does he play with an edge? He loves to be able to make that first pass, but what he'll do is he'll jump up into the plate because he's such a good skater. But this guy's a throwback. He's a 30-year-ago guy. Well, if you want to see a little bit uh, of back checking, there's a good example of Radovojevic. And, and how about the play in front of the net? Some uh, action going on there. Back to live action is Ragnarsson. Rolls it deep for Sheer. Bump. Don't be stepping in front with Somic. And he was denied in tight by Belfort. Radovan Somic has been very impressive in this series. He's got such a great reach. And that way he just took a big advantage there because I don't think Belfort was ready for it. Now Leach chipping to Reichel. Reichel ahead. Janssen up on the play, knocked it away, and Brashear whips it back to Ragnarsson, who blasts in from the red line. Flyers completing changes as the puck goes into the corner. Leach hammered by Brashear, who also gets the puck. He's spun around, but still has it. Now to Brashear to Ronick for the shot. Save made by Belfort. Jared didn't get a lot on that one, but the Leafs misfire and a pass out in center. They get it back to Cave. Just bouncing into the Philadelphia line. Did you see the hit by Brashear? He took the man up against the wall. He didn't drill him. He didn't get anything up. He's got to make uh -oh. sure. Alexei Zhamnov took an awkward hit, and he's heading off the ice. I believe it was McCabe who got him as he was beginning to fall down. And now Kapanen turns the puck over. McGill, he's stepping in front. Loose puck rattling around. S takes the save. And the puck finally bounces free, but there's Neuendijk. Back out to Burke for shot. Save it. Rebound to Kapanen. His turnover started the whole thing, and this time he'll just whip it up the wall and all the way down and take the icing. Berg back for the touch-up, and Jamnoff getting attention on the Philadelphia event. It looks like he's got, uh, like Jimmy McCross and the athletic trainer is uh, tending to his back. He's always got the pad right there, the pack, the heat pack on the back, but let's see if we can pick up. Right there, you get a hit, just drills him right in the back a little bit. Now the pant goes right back up. It's probably right in the middle of the number. There's some covering there. Now how about this goaltending again by Robert Esch? I mean, there's a deflection, paddle down. There's no place for that puck to go. He was waiting for the whistle. It never came to that shot underneath it. Recky back to get the puck. Roberts is on him. On Zeus, twists it back to Commander. We approach the five minute mark of this second period. And it will lob it out. Berg is there for Tucker. Tucker the left wing feed. Roberts couldn't handle it. Neither could Hanzus. And here's Sundin. They say it's onside. Sundin a shot blocked by Markov. Roberts will turn it deep. And there's Tucker centering it. And Sundin tightly marked by Danny Markov. And it's Hanzus the other way. His right wing feed is to Recky. Recky finds Leclerc. Leclerc then spun off the puck by Marshman. Recky. Great work along the board. Recky feeling better now as he's getting over that flu that he had earlier on. Ragnarsson will keep it in. Hands it around, and Tucker, dumped by Ragnar, I'm going to take that Radovojevic. Now it's Primo on Marshman. Primo goes down. Radovojevic to the puck. Rocco Radovojevic trying to fight off a check. Does. Back to the point, Ragnarsson. Ragnarsson just chips it back in on the wall and says, boys, go to work again. There's Leclerc and Tucker doing just that. And Marshmutt will reverse the puck out of the reach of Belfort. In comes Ragnarsson from the point, takes the hit from Domi, and the Leafs clear the zone. Well, when you're, you're pinching with your defenseman, you know you're doing the job properly. Primo's shot is blocked as the Flyers turn that puck over at the red line, getting it back from the Leafs, and turned it into a shot toward the net in a hurry. This is icing as Johnson is back. Flyers have that 2 0 lead. Ash has been tremendous. In his return, and as the Leafs get the puck to McGillney, and he'll tip it ahead. And Joe Neuendijk moving well, losing it, but there's Panikarovsky with a backhander deflected by Pitkin in, into the safety netting. There's Gagne nudging the puck into the Toronto zone. Belfour out, finds Cabrillet, and he'll get it back to Carl Pilot. 26-year-old defenseman ahead to Nick Atropov. Atropov, who you know, got that puck in, Kilger was offside, and so the whistle. Coatsy talked about in Coatsy's corner. A lot of people didn't expect Antipov to be available for this game, but here he is. I like the one guy, the reporter up here, said that actually the league might have done the Flyers a favor, a favor by, keeping, by him keeping him in the lineup. <laughs> <laughs> they, they aren't uh, what, what, subtle here. We were talking about being subtle. They're not subtle in the newspapers here in Toronto. They all rip you when they don't think you're playing well. Well, he's a big man, six foot five, but he's really been hindered by injuries, especially to his knees. At one point, you remember, he was uh, the big news and the big name that was always thrown around in the Lindros possible trade years ago. Just for you to know, you know, all the things you think about the guys you got for Lindros, right now on the Flyers roster, 
Kapanen, Brashear, Janssen. A Not result bad. of the Eric Lindros trade. Not bad at all. As the puck comes ahead here to Tucker, there is Janssen scooping it back to center. Flyers making a change as McCabe gathers. Yeah, this is a time when you know you want to make sure that that gap is very tight. The, the, the separation between defensemen and forwards. And if you can stand up at that blue line, and right here in the second period, the Flyers do an excellent job of that. Puck goes back to McCabe at the point. McCabe for Tucker, tipped away by Janssen. And Janssen will hammer it off the glass and then flip it through center. Here's a race with Radovojevic and Leach, and Belfort will come out of his net and steer it back behind the net to Leach. Ryan Leach checked by Radovojevic. McCabe, his pass out of the reach of Tucker. Ragnarsson cuts it off. His pass hit his stick, and it's gotten back by McCabe. Gabe and Leach, minus one in that first period, so the plus minus figures dropping further after their tough afternoons in Philly on Sunday. Here's a turnover. Gagne jumps in the loose puck quickly to Gagne. Gagne's dump as the puck comes in front, and Anzu says it tipped away. Numbers for the Leafs the other way. Here's McGillney. McGillney stops the shot. Save it. No whistle as he had it covered, and now it bounces free. Boy, now behind the net. The net is knocked off its moorings. And they're going to call a penalty here. Well, first of all, the puck was covered. Should have been a whistle to begin with. But now there will be a penalty on Philadelphia for knocking the net off its morning. Timing, timing, timing. That's what Ken Hitchcock's saying. He said, I got a half a hockey game to go. I got to make sure I stay out of the box. And we want to make this game as boring as possible. Let's see where Tamander knocks the puck or knocks the net off of its moorings. A lot of activity, obviously, around Robert Ash. And right there, you can see it. And the puck was a little loose there just prior. Yeah, they're certainly uh, starting to call that play a lot more. And they used to be able to do that at will, but there uh, certainly is no doubt about that call. Now there was a big call in last night's game when it could have been a goal scored when Ron, or a Detroit player knocked it off this morning. This one not as blatant, but a power play for the Leafs. McCain shot the puck to just wide by Roberts in front. And now it's McGillney. Turning with it. Back in the corner for Roberts. Second power play of the game for Toronto. Ragnarsson stole the puck from McGillney, but could not clear as McCabe kept it in. Gives it to Roberts. And the veteran crosses it to McGillney. Back out to McCabe. Interference on John Muffy was knocked down by Sundin. Not called. Here's McGillney. Across ice. Sneaking in was leaked, but he could not get much on that offering. McGillney has it knocked away by Ragnarsson again. And John Muff trying to get it out of the zone. Knocked McCabe over, but the puck sitting on the wall and finally it is Jamnoff knocking it out to center ice. Leach and Ronick in a race. Ronick gets to the puck. Ronick trying to play it around. Leach. Leach ties him up and Sundin gets to the disc. One ten remaining in the power play. Leach at the center. Here's Tucker shuttling it into the Philadelphia zone. Ash will knock it down and set it up for Janssen who drilled it and McCabe kept it in. Got it to McGillney. His shot batted into the air and then knocked out of arm's way by Gagne who turns it up the wall but McCabe reads it and keeps it in. He gets to Sundin. Sundin to Tucker and right back to Sundin. A battle going on in front as McGillney's trying to set up shot. Here's Leach, flipping one, blocked off by Janssen. Gagne blows a tire trying to clear. Now along the boards with his glove. Got the puck to Primo, who clears all the way down. See, Simone Gagne kept his head up. He did blow a tire. He fell to the ice, but he kept with it and made sure the stick was in a position to prevent the player moving past him. He's back after it, though. Here's Neuendijk all the way around. 22 seconds in the power play, Kamerlay! Drilling that one high and wide off the setup from Neuendijk. Radovojevic will clear, but Belfort comes away out. He wants to keep that puck heading toward the Philadelphia zone. See, a lot of the, the play by the Leafs is outside. It's nothing in close. There's Neuendijk looking to get something in close, but he was tightly checked, and the puck deflects off a stick and out of play. Here's Kamerlay for Toronto, flipping one that goes wide. Ragnarsson reaching, but it ends up back behind the net to Kilger. He'll bank it back out. Coverlay shot goes wide, bounces back out. Back on the rest. He's down, but he makes the save. And covers, and then Kilger gets his stick up on Markov. And then another battle going on as Jamnoff. And Jamnoff gets a shot in over the top on Domi. We'll be back. Now we're going to have uh, double minors here with Jamnoff uh, along with Domi. Happened just to the side of the net as they. Went at it. Domi took offense to Zamnoff knocking him down. But in that last penalty kill by the Flyers, they kept everything to the outside, which was real good penalty killing. 
Great stretch there by Esha on that save. Esha didn't get much on the shot, but it would have gone across the line if this bad wasn't there. Here's Primo moving up. Four skaters aside. Johnson, Pagania handles it beautifully, gives it back to Johnson, who stops. Now he heads back out the other way with it. Lost it, but then it bounces to Gagne, who centers. Primo is all alone, but that pass was a rocket. And it went between his legs. Here's McGillney the other way. McGillney centering, blocked off by Ragnarsson. And Ragnarsson will get to the puck. Starts the Flyers the other way. His pass just out of the reach of Primo. Would have been a two-on-one. And now Cabrillet will drift back with it. Flyers changing the pass ahead to Sundin. Sundin and McGillney moving in. Ragnarsson calmly says, no, you don't. Max takes the puck away. And here's Recky. Boy, Ragnarsson's had a solid game so far. Ragnarsson and Janssen, they're going to get a lot of the time because of all the injuries. Malakoff was a 25-minute, 26-minute man a game. You've got to re replace that. And Dennis Seidenberg has still not seen a shift in this game as Danny Markov is back. Markov will turn it up the wall, hoping for Hanzus. It'll be McCabe instead in center. Dropping it back to Leach. I'll tell you, when McCabe gets that puck, he wants to get rid of it right away. He'll blast here. The save by Ash juggles. The commander is there to handle. Takes the hit from Roberts to make the play to Markov. Final 33 seconds of the four on four. There's Hanzus on the red line. Lobs it in. Belfour will drop it back to the corner. There's McCabe. McCabe the pass off Leach. He hit Panikarovsky with a redirection. Now has to pop in the slot. Turning and shot off a skate. Right to McCabe, his shot, and it hit the post. Now Antropov after it. Uh, now Antropov checked, and Aronik will get it to Kapanen moving up. Two on two with Amati, and Kapanen will dump it in. I believe hit the post, and ricocheted around behind Ash, and it uh, stayed out. That's the key. <laughs> have to get a look at it on the replay as Berg gets it in. Pitkin in to Aronik. Big hit on Pitkin in by Panikarovsky. And a penalty on Pitkin. I'll tell you, the Leafs are running around in this game, and it's the Flyers who will end up shorthanded for a third time, and the Leafs have only been shorthanded once. Pitkin is going to get the arms up around Ponikarovsky's head as they go up against the glass. Wacom standing right there. So it's the old saying you've got to be able to re really hold on to your temper. And you're always going to get caught if you're the guy retaliating. Now, here comes the play. Here comes Ponikarovsky. Gets the real good hit up on Pitkin. But watch Pitkin. He gets his arms right around Pit, uh, Ponikarovsky's head. Now, there's Ash at his very best. Again, that oh, puck it just went wide. Hit Antropov. Yeah. See, from our angle, it, you could not tell whether it hit the post, Esch, but there the replay always tells the story. And then Antropov at the side of the net. Third power play for the Leafs. I'll tell you what, uh, it would behoove the Flyers to stay on the ice. They can ill afford to keep taking penalties because that's one way of the Maple Leafs getting back in this game. There's Neuendijk. Back to Pilat. Across Cabrillet. Cabrillet flips one save. Esch rebound. Sundin couldn't get it. Gagne got just enough on it to clear the zone. Remember, it's important that Robert Esch makes the initial save. The Flyers are going to do their job is to make sure that there's no second shot. Here's McGillney. All the way across looking for Cabrillet. He couldn't knock it down. Stick tied up. Ragnarsson couldn't get to it, but a great play. The reach of Primo stealing the pass from McGillney, and he'll move it back to Radovojevic. Radovojevic, a burst is good in the right wing. The wrist shot! And Belfour makes the save. Bats the puck to Pilot. 107 remaining on the power play. 6.45 in the second period. Pilot with a pass. Michael got it deep. Commanders there. Goes up the middle. Lost it. And the pass was off the mark for Domi. And Anzus will clear. And Commander got away with one. I think we're all holding our breath. That's a no-no going up the middle. You hang on to that puck. Don't give it away blind as the Commander did. They cave to Domi. He'll shuttle it into the Philadelphia zone. Markov pounded by Domi. Markov's helmet again comes popping off. And it's Reichel with the puck for Toronto. Reichel in the corner. Tucker. Battle in front of the net as usual. Here's McCabe. McCabe waiting his pass across to Leach. Leach to Reichel. Reichel in the slot for Tommy Tamander. Broke it up. And Ronick will clear. The coverage is just fabulous. And going back to what Dorney had mentioned, you don't mind that puck in the perimeter. They can do it all they want. Absolutely. Look out here, though. Antropov moving in. His pass. Though, deflects back and then Antropov just whips one wide. Back out all the way to Leach. Leach had his pass go off Ragnarsson. Bounces high in the air. They 
Bat at it. Power play is over. Out of the box is Pitkinen. Puck cleared all the way down by running. This will be icing unless Pitkinen can get to the puck in front of the cave. He does. Or he doesn't. And so icing is called. Well, the Flyers get control here and hope that that icing does not cost them. And they do get the puck out to center right. And Recky will drop it back to Kapanen. Sammy Kapanen ahead on Zeus. Sends it in. See that first pass? Kapanen moves off the board, looks in the middle. Hansus loops it for him, give him a little bit of a release. Real nice play right there. Well, the Leafs get to it and lob it out. Five minutes to play here in this second period. Chances and the shots. Myers had the slight advantage in the first. Leafs helped by two power plays have the edge in the second. Leclerc winding it deep. Leach up by Recky. Leclerc in on McKay, but the puck played by Sundin through Fitzgerald, and then Ragnarsson has it for Philadelphia. Cross for Janssen. And that one bounces off of the linesman skate to Primo. Primo checked. It's in the slot. Shot goes wide by Somic. Somic gets back to it. Somic twisting and turning on Leach. Leach stays with him. Pushes him in against the wall. Brashear comes in to help his teammate out with the puck jammed by Sundin, but right there is Ragnarsson. Throws it in along for Brashear. Sundin on him. Now Primo. Back around behind, Somic could not knock that one down. Robertson, Brashear pursue, and there's Somic again. Somic snuck it along for Primo. Primo, pulled over by Roberts. Somic and Primo get right back up and begin the battle for the puck as Roberts gives Primo several shots from behind. Those two do not like each other. That one from behind into the boards, no call. Roberts continues to push and shove on Primo. Primo just stays with it. Another shot up high to the back by Roberts. Oh, got about four of them. With not one call made, and the puck rolls out to center right. Here's Ragnarsson, and he'll lob it out and into the Toronto zone. Now Roberts and Ragnarsson come together. The penalty, as I'm still not sure who it's on, as Ragnarsson and Roberts and Janssen were all involved in center ice. This goes to show you the strength of Keith Primo. He just lets Roberts and shields that puck very well. There was the one that should have been called right there from behind. The cross check to the back. And Primo's doing everything in his power to be able to just keep with it and to draw the penalty. It didn't work. What a horse Keith Primo has been. And he goes back to the bench for a well-deserved rest. Not, just now getting the announcement of the penalty. Johnson for roughing. Roberts for interference. Here's Nuenbeck a shot. Lashes off the pad of Esch. And then wide. Four on four hockey here. Commander, after that puck with Kaberle, Ronick comes in to get it free for Markov. And he'll drop it back to Ronick. And Ronick will... The safe play there, just chipping it off the glass to center ice. Three minutes remaining in this second period. Bielash ahead. Tamander knocks it down at the Philadelphia line. Drops the bouncing puck back to Markov. They give to Tamander. Flyers changing the forward, so the defenseman play catch while the change takes place. Some real good patience by the Flyers waiting for the line change. You know, when you can spread out a, with your two defensemen like that, there's no re recourse for the Toronto Maple Leafs to, you know, have the proper coverage. Ronald Solnick picks up an outstanding pass for Michael Hunt, just one nothing. Jeremy Roenick, this is a great, great education for kids right there. Stay with the puck, the rebound will come right back to you. And a Robert Escher course with some pretty good saves to keep this game at 2 nothing. Sometimes you gotta have a little luck too, guys. Part of the equipment. And I'll tell you what, the agility of Robert Esch, you know, every, every game that we watch him, we, we marvel at the, the coverage that he has in the nets. You know, and a lot of that has to be with the balance and the way he pushes off and, and gets himself in a position to stop the next shot. Uh, so often we talk about a way to beat a goaltender is to go east-west. Robert Esch will tell you he loves when teams try to go east-west on him. Going side to side, he said that's his forte. And he thinks he'll beat most shooters and players to the other side when they try to do that. Here's Keith Primo. Primo flipping that pass off the stick of Gagne. Deep into the Leafs zone. Gagne on McCabe. And McCabe will bunt the puck to Leach. 
35 seconds remain in the concurrent minus, just over two minutes in the second period. Antropov to McCabe. Shook by Mark Recchi. Recchi working free of Antropov. Recchi up the right wing. Cuts in front. Tried to get it to Hansus. It was blocked away. A stick goes flying. It was Antropov. So he's regained it. This is where coaching during the regular season is so important. You've taught your team how to trap. You've taught your team how to play the 1-2-2 two, two, to hold up. And this is where it all comes down to in a game like this leading 2-0 on the Rose. Markov a pass to Hanzus. He'll stuff it into the Leafs zone. Out comes Belfour as he gets the puck to Berg. Janssen and Roberts leave the penalty bench. Back to full strength hockey. Here comes Antropov. Up the right wing. His shot smothered by Tamander. Tamander then barreled into by Panikarovsky. The puck up to the point. There's Marshman. Marshman holds it back to Roberts, who's left untended. Centered it in front, goes all the way through to Janssen. Janssen will move up with Ronick, and Janssen just decides to clear, but he did so from his side of the red line, and that's icing. Yeah, because he had Jeremy Ronick with him. You know, sometimes uh, with all the crowd noise, uh, a player will yell, but you won't, he won't hear you because the, uh, the noise is so loud in this building. But in any event, the Flyers are having a good face-off night, so they don't mind having a face-off in their own zone. Ronick, one of the goal scorers for the Flyers in that first period. That was the only scoring, or has been the only scoring thus far in this game. Here's Domi, marked by Janssen, drops to McGillney. McGillney pursued by Primo, who uses that reach again to poke the puck to center ice. A Neuendijk line against the Primo. Primo steamrolls. <laughs> Domi with a check in center. That would have gotten a huge ovation in Philadelphia. Nothing here. Domi in front. That goes off a skate. Uh, Gagne is checked. Still has the puck, and Simone, who entered the game tied to the NHL lead in playoff plus minus and plus nine. Because he plays so well defensively, has the puck again. Moves to Janssen. Final 27 seconds of the period. That pass behind Gagne. He reacts well to get it across. And now Radovojevic hoisted into the lead zone. Did you see the move that Radovojevic, not the move, but the play did? Very patient, knew he couldn't move up, just move it backwards. Patience is absolutely outstanding. Tucker winding it into the Philadelphia zone. This will try for one last four right here in the second period. Tuck right along the wall. Roberts stopped and Jamnock could not clear. Leach with a pass across to McCabe. A shot! Save it! Rebound cleared by Tamander. And one last big stop by Robert Esch as he denied McCabe just before the horn sounded. And Matt That's Sundin beginning to show the frustration. Some more pushing and shoving as Darcy Tucker, as usual, involved. But finally, the players begin to separate. Eddie Belfort will head back to the confines of the Leafs locker room. No scoring in the second period. So the Flyers will carry a two-goal lead into period number three. Well, the Flyers have been doing a lot of this, Coatsy, in these playoffs. They have been so effective playing from in front. And they have done just that in this important game here tonight. Well, it's a pretty telling number, and it's throughout the National Hockey League. Now what you've got to do is you hope that that holds true because you don't want to allow the Leafs to get a goal. You don't want them to get a snip. You're 20 minutes away from going to the conference final. So you know that the conversation in the dressing room was everybody's got to just get a quick ship, do a good job, Make sure that we're sound defensively. That is the key. Keep it simple. Just like that play there. Dump the puck. Let them work for it. Okay, is back here. That'll be an icing touch-up. So the Flyers fired that from their side of the red line. You don't want to do too much of that here in this third that, that is true. But you know, both teams have been very disciplined. You know, you, you always uh, know that there's going to be some odd man rushes. In tonight's contest, neither team has been able to use an odd man rush to their advantage. So both teams have been discipline in that respect. The Leafs, they have the weight of a hockey crazed city in their shoulders. They made a ton of moves this year, as they did last year, taking on some high-priced veterans to win now. They have to win this third period in a big way in order to keep those Stanley Cup dreams alive. Primo rubbing out Roberts. McGillney and Ragnarsson are tied up. It's Ragnarsson getting the puck to Gagne, and he'll flip it across ice. Well, the 13 guys are sitting watching the game tonight for the Toronto Maple Police to make a pretty good team with the fill-in of seven guys when you think of the Renbergs and the Barahowskis. Ron Francis. Ron Francis, who is retiring after this season. At least that has been the discussion. And he was a healthy scratch. Ragnarsson will play the puck in from the red line. The Flyers will change up. Radovojevic knocked down, and Matt Sundin finally got caught. 
He was giving Radovojevic the business this entire shift. And finally, the referee, Kevin Pollack, had had enough. Well, he he hurt him. Yeah, he puts that face in the glove. And, and in fact, uh, along the wall, he ripped off the helmet of Radovojevic and, and put the glove in the face. Yeah, it's about time they, they caught him out. Just watch right against the boards here now. Watch him, Dean. There, there he rips off the helmet and then pulls the sweater over Radovojevic. Now you have to make him pay. That was not the penalty. It can't, comes here in a second. You're right of voice, a little brush. Oh, and, and that was not a brush from Sundin. So a power play for Philadelphia, their second. But here come the Leafs shorthanded. Bouncing shot knocked away by Edge. It came out in front. And it was jammed wide. So the Flyers with the power play. The chance to build a three-goal lead. Amani will wind it in. Belfort got his stick on it. Ronick did not play it for some reason. And now Reichel. We'll play it all the way down. Well, he thought the puck was uh, at a clear path back to the defenseman, and that was not the case as a, a leaf was in between the defense and Ronin. There's Kapanen through the grasp of Antropov. Couldn't get the puck in. Now two flyers were in ahead of him, so it's a delayed offside. Three out available for the Leafs. And finally, they just clear it all the way down. Esch will set it up. Already 50 seconds into this power play. Here's Pitkinen. Yoni will start up. Passes to LeClaire. And then John from the red line winding it in. Balfour knocks it down. Let it back. Leap. Get to it, but it is gotten to by the Leafs. Cleared all the way down by Antropov. Now quick pass to Janssen ahead for Recky on the right wing. Recky Rister save Balfour. And he'll squeeze it. And there's that Patton and Recky move. Coming off the off wing. And uh, shoots from his wrong foot. He was going for the five hole there. We keep going back to this, but there's his playoff numbers, but this guy was supposed to rest this year. And all he did was lead the Philadelphia Flyers in scoring. Was in the top three in ice time. That wasn't supposed to happen either. Ragnarsson cross for Ronick. Just in center, and now they cough it up. They're almost too cautious here, Dornan, in this power play. You know you don't want to give up a short-handed goal, but when you play around with the puck, sometimes being cautious, sometimes it leads to exactly what you don't want. Now, here's Amani, bursting deep, centered it in front, Ronin reaching! But Panikarovsky got a piece of his offering, and it dribbled wide of the empty net. Jamnoff after the puck, the chop at Antropov, and the puck will roll ahead to Janssen, and the power play comes to an end as Ragnarsson dumps the puck in. You're going to say those two names an awful lot, as you have throughout this game. Ragnarsson and Janssen, 18 minutes apiece, after the second period, so now you're down to it because of the depleted core with Malikov not playing. Sundin bearing it on Tamander, but Tamander calmly got the puck to Markov. Head for Primo. He's bumped off the disc by Roberts. Leach will give to McCabe. McCabe back for Leach. Leach will be very active here in this third period. You can bet on that, but he didn't get this puck deep. Primo, right wing feed for Somic. Somic will dump it in and try to chase through the hook of Leach. It's Belfour up the wall. Roberts and Somic come together. Leach got the puck ahead. But then Leach is overtaken by Brashear. What you want, and I apologize for the people at home that want to be entertained, you want this period to be as boring as possible. You don't want to see the Leafs get any kind of speed up to the neutral zone. You want to see the players have as much puck control as possible and keep them out of their own, out of their own zone. On Zeus, battling with Leach, in comes Recky. He's wrapped up from behind by Neuendijk, but Recky keeps the legs moving. Neuendijk continued to grapple with Recky. The puck top three, here's McKay. To McGillney on the right wing. McGillney bumps, and the puck chopped back out to center by Recky. That was good fact-checking by John LeClaire, disrupting McGillney at the blue line. Arbele wound it in. Ragnarsson redirects out already. More than four and a half minutes into this third period. Here's Reichel. And he blasted that in with the skates of Janssen. Poke free, Jamna. Around. Ragnarsson beautifully handles that as he had Tucker right on him. Ragnarsson ahead to Ronick, flying through center, tripped up by Pilash. But no call. Leach the other way. Here's Tucker. Wide blast. Kick. Save it. And Kapanen will clear the rebound out to center and down the ice. We're here at the Air Canada Center. That's us along with our great crew. Bringing you game six. Steal by Kapanen. Kapanen. Drop pass. Primo. Primo drags it around behind. To the other corner with it. Still has it. Now trying to get to the slot. Primo backhands. It's blocked. Second drive. Bounces to Gagne. Back out just out of the reach of Primo to center. Jamnoff was shaken up on the last play. As the puck went down the other end, he was very slow getting back to the bench. Pitkin after this puck. Kilger barrels into him. Cap 
open and trying to stay with it. Pitkin in there as well. Now the puck will roll. Radovojevic gathers that puck. Tucker jabbing away at it. Bielak bumping Radovojevic. The puck to Pitkin in. Pitkin in will tip to Gagne. He'll chop at it, but Bielak is there. Bielak a nice shot to the back of Primo. Tucker spun around by Kapanen. Kilger steps into Kapanen. Puck back out to the point. Shot Marshman blocked by Primo, who then gets the puck and sends to Gagne. And Gagne will dump it in. Just add that to Primo's repertoire, blocking shots. Just over seven minutes. Make that just over six minutes into this third period. I am pushing it along. As Johnson will well, lob it back out to center. That's understandable. <laughs> And sure, Ken Hitchcock likes my time keeping better than the scoreboard here at Air Canada Center. It's wound in. Roberts pushed by Janssen. Recky reaching for the puck. Roberts ties him up. And now they just look and grind for it. And it's Recky poking it out to center. Leclerc beats McCabe to it. Leclerc now rumbling in the right wing. Stops. Winds. Fires McCabe. Will block that. Leclerc gets back to it. Pumps, but got the puck to Recky. Recky twisting and turning his leech. Tries to save it with him. Got it back to Leclerc. Leclerc knocked down by McCabe. And McCabe will get to the puck. McCabe then rammed into by Recky. By the way, Mark Recky, despite playing much of this series under the weather, is still one of the hit's leaders for Philadelphia in this series. Here's Sundin carrying it around behind the Philadelphia net. And there's Marcus Ragnarsson with another big play as he knocks it away and Ronick starts the other way. Ronick to the line, swings wide and then stops. Sits it in along the wall. Jamnos back out on the ice. That's a good sign for Philadelphia. Kabale ahead, now Antropov, and he'll float one to the right of Esch. Into the corner. Panikarovsky chops it around, but right there is Tamander. And Tamander will clear it up and out of the zone. You know, the Flyers of the defensemen have been just done an outstanding job. They're retrieving the puck, outlet passes, hanging on to it when the heat is on. Music to the Flyers, there's two, there's some boos emanating from the stands here at Air Canada Center as the crowd begins to turn on the Leafs. Still 12-15 remaining, and you know, all it would take to get the crowd firmly back behind the home team would be a goal. The Flyers will try to prevent that. Dumped in, though, this will be icing on Toronto. Danny Markov back for the touch-up, and will step aside. Detroit's done, so Philadelphia is now hockey town. As the puck goes in to the fire zone, Pitkinen trying to backhand that. Now Domi. Checked by Pitkinen, Kilger, or make that Tucker after it. And now it's Pitkinen loving the puck along. Somic is pinned. Kapanen got it to the line, Leach kept it in. Bounces back around behind, Domi after it. Remo dips back to get the puck to Brashear, and he'll throw it ahead for Somic. Radovan Somic, who has one of the flyer goals. Fans on that shot as Leach tipped his stick just as he was firing it. And the puck out to Tucker at center, whips it across for Sundin. Sundin will blast, save Esch. Rebound loose, Esch is crashed into by Domi. Play carries on, Esch scrambling back to his feet as Sundin and Hanzus battle. Trump wants a penalty. See, he's got yeah. one in. He made sure that he brought his right yeah. hand back, kept the left hand going. That way, he stayed away from getting that off, that, that holding penalty. I see Tucker and Brashear now go nose to nose behind the play after Tucker largely missed Brashear with a hit attempt. Icing was the call. And the players are separated. Well, the two of them there were trying to go to each other into a penalty. Oh, here comes uh, Tucker. He missed, but they come together again. There's a little jab. There's a jab back. <laughs> and Tucker. <laughs> <laughs> that, that head flew back. <laughs> uh, trying to draw a penalty, but none called there. Increase in ice time for Brashear. He's played with Keith Primo. Now Pat Quinn this series. Pat Quinn has McGillney back in the Sundin line. He lost shot. He scores! Off the draw. It's the newcomer to the series. He lost, of all people. And he gets the lease on the board and within one. Buckle your seatbelt. Well, this is about winning face-offs. And the face-off is won by Matt Sundin. It comes right back, and Pilos is just going to use the traffic to wind up and let it go. And if you listen, you can hear it come right up off the pipe. Esch is down. He's looking to see the puck come off the stick. He just has no idea where it is. Bang, right off the pipe. Well, this has certainly energized the crowd here. They were quiet for a long period of time, but... Sundin, he's had some success against Primo. 
And uh, there's an example of Brashear icing the puck, and you get too many faceoffs in your own zone. He's had success against everybody as Ash will grab this one. Sundin came into this game at 58.9% for the playoffs on draw. Now this 10 minutes just became a lot different. Obviously, it's going to get the crowd back in it, as you can hear. The Leafs are going to be a lot more aggressive, as they now are within one of tying this thing. But it's no different what the Flyers were doing before. The tactics, the strategy does not change. They win another draw. Here's McGillney. McGillney carrying deep. Commander will wrap him up. Jamnoff in there. Loose puck. Look out. Finally, it pops three to Ronick. Ronick ahead for Amani. Tony Amati up the right wing with it. Will finesse the puck into the lead zone. McKilney and Sundin get assists on that goal by Pilaj at 9.04, which has made this a nail butter. Here is Roberts. Rink wide feed for Sundin. He couldn't get it past Amanda. Ronick picks up the puck. Jeremy Ronick with speed through center on the left wing. Ronick takes a look, stops, spins. McKay will push him to the glass. The puck goes behind the net. Jamnock being grabbed. Amati gets the puck back to Markov. With Ruben Wine and fire and Bell for the save on the unscreened shot. Now Markov with the forwards heading off on a change. We'll just backhand deeper into the Toronto zone. We pass the midpoint of this third period. McKay circles back and gives to Leach. And now it's Panikarovsky. His pass handled by Milodak. The shot saved by Ash. He got the pad on it. And then the puck pops up into the crowd. Play is stopped. Okay, coming up tonight on Toyota Sports Night, Leslie Goodell, Neil Hartman. As you'll hear about the recap of this Flyers Leach. Game six, then the Sharks have game six as well as results to the Cardinals and the Philadelphia Phillies. Sharks leading the Az 1-0 in that game. As they try to close out the Az. They're having a little difficulty doing that so far. Right here, the Flyers trying to close out the Leafs. It's 2-1. to one. Flyers lead the series three games to two. Leafs clear it all the way in. This will be icing if Janssen can get there first, and he does as he's bumped into by Neuendijk, and Neuendijk disputes the icing call. Newendike was absolutely flying into the offensive zone. Flyers win the offensive zone draw. Leclerc dealing to Hanzus behind the net. He's wrestled off the disc by Reichel. Markov backhanding it in along the boards. Hanzus goes to work with Reichel again, this time in the corner. Hanzus stepping on the puck. Then it pops free. Recky could not get his stick free. And McCabe will get the puck. His pass off Leclerc's stick to Tamanda for a shot that goes wide as McCabe turned it over. Here's Markov. Markov rolling it along for Recky. McCabe wraps him up. And right up near Recky's face. And now it's Markov in. Tucker hits him. McCabe still has Recky pinned. And Domi gets to the puck. Leclerc chopping at him. Domi couldn't get it past Primo. Primo, though, tumbles to the ice. As the puck rolls out to center, Leclerc there. And it's jammed away. Here's going down. Leclerc took Leach's feet out from underneath him. And then plays the puck into the leaf zone. What a forechecking job by that line with Leclerc, Hanzus, and Recky. I mean, they just were everywhere. The better way to play this game is in the other end. There's Sundin popping it to McCabe. Across for Berg. In it goes. Esch will stop it behind the net. Play it along the glass. And it'll make it to Primo, who moves up with Gagne and Radovojevic. The pass tip. And finally, Radovojevic goes in ahead of the puck. And that offside was called. Now, Radar Bojevic has played extremely well. Hitchcock was quoted as saying that, you know, he only played 10, 11 minutes. We've got to get him more ice time. It seems the more that uh, you ice time you give him, the better he responds to it. Well, Ken Hitchcock said it's all about emotion. Now, everybody knew that the Leafs were going to come out firing, but he felt that his team had to increase their emotion on the road in this building, and I think they certainly have done that. Here's Carlay. With the puck, approach eight minutes remaining. Cabrillet fakes the dumping and then gives to Neuendijk. Neuendijk the shot. That's where he beat Patrick Maline twice in game seven of the first round series for Leafs, but this one doesn't get through. Now the puck gets past Pilaj, and he got Namani's way and did just enough to slow Amani down so he couldn't get to that and not get a penalty call on him. Now Pilaj, drop it back to Cabrillet. Now this is a combination you really want to go after, Pilaj and Cabrillet, especially Pilaj, you know, when he hasn't played. Antropov got the puck, had to Reichel, a wrister blocked off by Janssen. Ragnarsson checked by Neuendijk, or make that Panikarovsky, but the puck rolls ahead, and here's McKay. The Flyers' strategy, obviously, is to be able to forecheck low. In other words, they're not standing back in the neutral zone and waiting for the Leafs to have the ability to get any speed hitting the blue line. There's that score from Denver. 
and Sendampus has scored. San Jose trying to avoid becoming only the third team in NHL history and all professional sports, major professional sports history to blow a 3-0 series lead as they had a 3-zip lead, now it's 3-2. Statistician John Gould rooting for Colorado. He picked Colorado to win that series when they trailed three games to none. If it ever happens, we'll never hear the end of it. Oh. <laughs> Here's Tamander. Flipping it off, Gagne skate to Michael Hantus, back to Gagne. And Gagne will send it in. L4 stops it, takes a look, and deals to Leach. Seven minutes on the clock. Leach to McGillney, the right wing feed to Roberts. Roberts, marked by Commander, gets to Sundin, but he could not make a play out in front. He did steamroll Primo after he lost the puck. Kapanen moves up. Kapanen will chip it in. McKay will go after it. The Flyers peel back on another line change. This seems that the Sundin line is going every other shift. Well, he's short in the bench. There's no two ways about it. Roberts dumps it in. Leclerc rides Domian, but lost sight of the puck, and Domi escapes with it. Gave it to Roberts and got it back. By Domi, marked by Ragnuson. Back for Roberts. Leclerc runs into him. Ragnuson couldn't get it. Here's Domi side angle. Shot! Save it! Rebound batted into the crowd. By Philadelphia. Well, Domi at it again with that. Yeah, I mean, right this has face. been going on. This has been going on since the first period. Remember, Domi was in close, and Esch gave him a shot right to the head. Got away with one. He did. He got away with one. And Domi's been in his face the whole game. Well, there's the initial shot, and there's the slash against Esch. And uh, Esch gives it right back. And then Domi takes offense to that. But he's the one that gave it the first shot, the first volley. Yeah, Esch is not backing down, you know that. Off the draw, look out, another face-off win. Here's Pilash, though, unable to get a shooting lane. Just throws it in along the wall. Leafs coming hard, they are a desperate hockey team. Kilger flings one wide. Commander jabbing at the puck, and it rolls to center ice. That's called taking a hit to make sure the puck is out of harm's way. You're going to earn your keep here by winning those one-on-one -on -one battles now. Less than six minutes to play in the third. Ronick will roll one in. That gets over the stick of Belfort. Cabrillet will get to Pilos. He's getting a lot of ice time. A guy in his first game since early March. Here's Pilos to the red line and clearly offside with the Leafs. Stucker was way in ahead of the play. We'll be back. Fans trying to urge their Leafs on here at Air Canada Center. The Flyers. Those are the positive signs, the good numbers, and they want to just add to those numbers, and they have 538 to work with. Well, they're going to have to do with four defensemen. Hitchcock has short, and he's using four defensemen. Got Sammy Kapanen back on the forward line with Keith Primo. That's seven defensemen if you include Kapanen as a defenseman in the game. Seidenberg is still yet to see the ice. Antipov comes it in, Panikarovsky after Janssen stays with him. Gagne in heavy traffic. Maneuvers the puck ahead to Primo. Primo got it just out to center ice. They just had a sign up saying the Leafs fans are the best fans in the National Hockey League. Obviously, they haven't been to Philadelphia. Ragnarsson will lob one back, and here is Leach getting to it. As Leach surveys, we had five minutes remaining in the third. McCabe ahead to McGillney, the dangerous one. McGillney centering it! Didn't challenge him. They allowed McGillney to do whatever he wanted and just kind of backed in and watched him. And all he did was shovel the puck in front of the net. See right there, you that's when you have to take McGillney. But give Roberts credit, he went right at the net. Hanzus could not grab all of that loose puck. But there is Sundin. Again, Primo had left the ice. Sundin comes on and he scores a goal. Boy, it sure looked like there was goaltender interference there by Gary Roberts. Let's take a look at Roberts. Did Roberts try to hold himself up? That's the key. And then nobody knew where the puck was. Hanzus went by, Johnson went by. Now you got yourself a horse race. Yeah, Hornets, this is what you have. Here's Sunday the shot, big save, Esch. And Markov takes the puck. 4.33 to play. It's tied. Flyers in lead. Almost the entire hockey game of the Leafs. And at least for the moment, saved their season. Here's Balfour. Tipping to Cabrillet. He couldn't hang on, but Amati has a broken sticker, has lost his stick, so he hits the bench. The Leafs dump the puck into the Philadelphia zone. 
Ragnarsson crashes with Domi. Markov gets the puck. Takes a look. And then flutters one that is not out of the zone. Bad turnover. Domi barrels into Markov. And LeClaire with a good play to come back and get to it. He hit Recky, but Recky could not hang on. Now Domi has it back. Wide open was Reichel behind the defense, but he could not get to that puck. Markov again having trouble with the puck. It's Hansus who will dip back for it. Michael Hansus gets past the fourth checking of Tucker. Michael Hansus steamrolling up with it. Hansus to the right wing for Recky. They say it's offside. Offside, it's so loud in here. No one heard the whistle of Ray Scampanello. And that little dump pass off the boards, and McGillney had plenty of time to shovel it in front. There was a loose puck. Sundin was not picked up, and he stuffs it, and we got a tie game. That's Sundin. Produces when it counts. It's his fourth goal of these playoffs. His 32nd is a leaf, which ties him with a guy they know pretty well around here, Dave Keon, for second all time in Leafs playoff scoring. But those numbers mean nothing to that guy right now. All he's worried about is the score you see up there at the top of your screen. 2 2. Have a delay here. Yeah, I don't know if Primo was over talking to the referee, and I don't know what they're looking for here. Might have been the time because no one heard the whistle on the offside, and perhaps some seconds stepped off the clock. All right. Flyers win the draw, and Ragnarsson will spin it deep. Belfort will set it up for McKay. Flyers make a quick change. The line matching continues. McKay to Leach. Leach a pass that's redirected into Philadelphia's zone. Ash out of his net. Tipped it to the corner. Janssen flipped it up along the wall, and it's Hansus ahead for Brashear. Brashear threw it across in center. McKay will track it down. He got it as far as Ragnarsson. Somek was already in the zone, so that's offside. Radovan Solmik has just seemed to get a lot stronger with his opportunities. Remember, he hasn't had a heck of a lot of time. He's been plagued by injuries in his two years here with the Philadelphia Flyers. But, you know, as time goes on, you learn the game at this level. You learn to play it within the smaller ice surface. And you get used to the climate you're in, and he has certainly benefited from it. There's Aki Berg with the puck for Toronto. They'll scale one into the Philadelphia zone. Tamander will play the puck to Markov. Danny Markov takes a look. A long one. His pass ahead to Jean Nuff. He couldn't get through center. Markov will get the puck back. Again, a long look. His pass is to Tamander. The flyer forwards got real high there. He'll just flip it through center, and Ronick will steer it in. But he was over the red line, making that a two-line pass. Tamander had no other option. Goals by Pioche and Sundin have... Brought the fans back, brought the Leafs back in the game. Janssen backhands ahead to Kapanen. Sammy Kapanen up the right wing. Kapanen met by Kabrile. Now it's Pilosh getting his stick free from Primo, but then run into by Kapanen. Sammy Kapanen up forward on this shift. And it's Pilosh up the wall. Ragnarsson kept it in. Pitched it to Kapanen and batted it to Primo. Primo behind the net. Hands on a pass, and then the second try is knocked down. Here's Panikarovsky. The other way is passed off of Antropov. Neuendijk surging to it. Ragnarsson there instead. Ragnarsson looking for Gagne, who didn't see the pass coming, evidently. And now the Leafs have it here. Panikarovsky, a shot that goes wide. Now Kapanen to it. Kapanen will move it up and clear in. That, that line needs to change very, very quickly, because now they've been up and back, and they're out of gas. Less than two minutes to play, and we have to say this now in regulation time. Markov back, Carroll is icing by the Leafs. We'll see if the Flyers can take advantage with an offensive zone draw. Now, we haven't had any uh, overtime games this year. No, we have not. Had a lot of overtime between these clubs in last year's series, but this year it's been regulation play, but a lot of heroes with game-winning goals throughout mm. these playoffs for the Flyers. They have spread the wealth. Absolutely. You just have to look at the faces. Here we go. Jamnoff buried by Sundin. And the puck comes free to McKay. McKay to McGillney. Roberts is charging down the left. And McGillney making moves. Patterson with a Roberts center for Sundin. And Jamnoff a huge play as he came back to disrupt him and knock him into the net. Sundin then a swat at Jamnoff's ankle. And Sundin's gotten away with a lot in this hockey game. That's all about coverage. You got one on one. McGillney with Tamanda. Roberts is going to come right through the goal freeze. But watch Jamnoff. He lets him go a little bit, but he comes back and recovers right here. 
And I'll tell you, that might have just saved the game-winning goal because if he doesn't upset Sundin, is a right-hand shot, you got yourself. Look at that. Right at the last second, he disrupted Sundin, and the puck went away. He plays both ends of the ice. We know that. Alexi Jamna. Sundin and Primo on this draw. Flyers with the edge, but Sundin and Primo, they've been the two best for their respective teams and draws throughout the playoffs. Flyers get control as Tamander has it. Softly up the wall, made it through McGillney. McCabe will play it at the Toronto line. Across for Leach. Leach got it ahead to Roberts. Roberts will dump it in. Reichel and Tamander after it. Tamander used his body, then Roberts comes in after it. Reichel got it free in front. Yes, a spectacular save on McDonnie. Oh, Robert Ash with unbelievable anticipation. Kapanen in the other way. Kapanen gains the line. His shot goes off a leg and wide. Domi checked by Gagne. Leach will control as we head into the final minute of the third period. Boy, the Flyers just have not been able to put any pressure, any shots in this third period. There's McCabe stuffing the puck as far as Recky, then it's poked away from him to Tucker. Tucker moving in, his shot ends up getting deflected across ice. Ragnarsson regains his stick. Recky moves the puck, looking for Hanzus. Hanzus bumped by Andropov. And Leclerc is there to throw the puck deep into the Toronto zone. Belfour out of his net. He'll get to Pilash. It gets past him. Hanzus over after it. Pilash having trouble. The puck bouncing around. Kabale skates. Now Recky after it. Recky gets wide. Recky trying to center. Blocked by Kabale. Now behind the net. Hanzus up muscling the leap to the puck. Gets it to Leclerc. Shot is blocked. And now the Leafs come back with numbers. It's a three on one. Andropov. Andropov. Pass blocked by Janssen. Tucker to the puck. He's checked by Leclerc. Now they try to center it. It'll come through and make it to center ice. And we will have overtime. Oh, both clubs with some chances late. And the Leafs score twice in the third for the first time in this series and for the Flyers the first time in these playoffs. We have overtime. All right. Either the Flyers move on to the Eastern Conference Finals or it's Game 7 on Thursday night. Away we go in overtime. Ryan McCabe across to Brian Leach. His pass is rink wide out of the reach of McGillney. In on Esch. He tries to set it up to Ragnarsson. Now it's Janssen. Mr. Ronick ahead for Amani. Tony Amani trying to beat McCabe. Got hauled down. And McCabe tipped it back, but not out of the zone. Janssen's there. He'll backhand it around for Amati. Tony Amati turning with it. Amati center for Jean now, reaching for it. Turns the shot, save, rebound, and that's blocked by McCabe. McGillney and Amati crash after it in the corner. Jean now tries to center it, goes off a stick to Roberts. And now it's McGillney taking control. McGillney to Roberts, and he'll just hoist one into the right of Esch. Janssen is back, lays it ahead for Jamnov, who banks to Radovojevic. He was checked. Jamnov is there, giving to Ragnarsson. Ragnarsson will wind and blast. Save Belfort. And Akarovsky couldn't clear. Primo, a shot that will float off the blocker of Belfort. Pilaj, then clearing. Off the stick into the Philadelphia zone. No icing here. Commander Panikarovsky. Commander pokes it to Radovojevic. Radovojevic shoveled it along the wall. It's swatted back around behind the net. Commander will track after it. Jam for it. Panikarovsky got in the way. Primo checked by Antropov. Commander, great work to stay with that. And he got it ahead to Gagne. Simone Gagne from the red line will wind it in. Radovojevic tips. Primo sends one wide of the net. Bounces out to Tamander. Tamander a shot! Save off a rebound! And Primo could not quite contain it. The other way goes Tucker. He'll softly play it into the Philadelphia zone and go after it himself. He's bumped by Markov. Taken down by Markov. Radovojevic in there, so is Domi. And now it's Tucker behind the net. Left alone. Tucker steps in front and he just hoisted it right on through the crease. It's Leclerc the other way. Looking for his first goal in these playoffs. John Leclerc. Check. Play is onside. Hansus after it. He's ridden into the corner by Bird. Leclerc crashes in on Reichel, but Reichel stays with the puck and rolls it around to the other side. Tucker checked by Recky. Recky trying to get that puck free. Leclerc went to the other side, though, and the puck is sent back through center. Pitkin will have to track it down. Yeah, normally in playoffs, boy, it ends very quickly because the teams are playing at a high tempo, and both teams uh, had a chance early in this overtime to end it. Ash in his first ever playoff overtime. And Amani will send it across to Jeremy Roan. Speeding up to center is Roenick. 
Sends one in, and Belfort will just guide that one away to the board. Roberts tips it ahead. McGilney could not contain that. Buckets Ragnarsson across for Janssen. Lost an edge, went down into the board. Flyers will clear the puck in. Here's Leach. Ryan Leach ahead for Roberts. Roberts stepped into by Markov. Markov ended up hitting the ice. Roberts cut and stick right up. There is Chin. Ragnarsson looking for Jamrop. That's tipped. No icing. It rolls in on Belfort anyway. Flyers will change as Belfort takes a look right in front of him. That, that takes some courage right there. You can tell he's a veteran goaltender when he maneuvers with the puck within a foot or two of the goal line. Now it's Gagne back. Gagne snaps the pass to Ragnarsson and directs to Primo. Keith Primo has expended a lot of energy in the last 48 hours. That pass misses Panikarovsky. It'll be icing on Toronto as Markov goes back. Well, let's take a look at the Flyers' game-winning goals in this series. Mark Recchi, last couple of years. Well, we're going to have a, just a, oh. a bevy of winning goals here. Primo off the bench. Remember this the one. Primo moves deep with it. Stop. I think I do. Four years ago tonight. He scores! Keith Primo! And this one against the Rangers. Or check that, against the Devils. That's going all the way back to 95. As the puck is cleared out the center, and here's Pitkinen. Giving to Kapanen. That pass ends up on the stick of Carberle, hey, and he guides it into the Philadelphia zone. Esch having problems with that puck, lost it. Domi centers. Pilaj at the point will keep it in. But then Kapanen, a good play, a good read to steal, and then lob it out to center ice. Pilaj across for Carberle, his pass to Domi, and he'll redirect it to the Philadelphia zone. When Esch came out to be able to handle that puck, he lost sight of it. He had no idea where that puck was. Leclerc takes the pass, and then Flutters one to the right of Belfort. Berg is back. Berg to Panikarovsky up the wall. Make that mark. And it did get out to center. Back in and offside is call. There are the current Flyers with overtime goals. Only for three of them. We showed you Primo's. Recchi's was right here in this building last year. You also saw that package. Uh, uh, Joe Neuendijk is right up there with overtime winning goals too. Sundin in the regular season scores a lot in overtime as well as in the playoffs. So he is this good clutch as we've already found out here. Oh, Ash. That also takes some courage as with a leaf nearby he stuffed that puck right through his own crease. Yeah, both goaltenders are making it very interesting here in the sudden death overtime. That's where the word instinct comes into play, right? His instinct. Jam off to Ronick. Ronick making the move on Bird. Ronick. Yeah, he ran out of real estate, but there's Amani trying to move in front. That tips back to the point. Markov. And just bang it back deep for Ronick. Ronick centers. Here's Amani turning away from the net. Amani back to the point. Markov. Markov, a shot that is knocked down by Jeanoff ahead to McGilney. McGilney bumped but carrying onto the leash. Roberts to Sunday. Look out. Sunday shot. And he missed the wide. Leach trying to keep it in at the point, did to Sundin, who tips to Roberts, back for Sundin. Commander stayed with him, and his shot went off the outside of the net. Jamnoff again tries to clear, and he got that one past McCabe and down the ice. Again, uh, Jamnoff demonstrating what a good defensive player he is. There's a pass, though, room through center for the Leafs. Andropov will drill it in. Janssen after it. Centering pass is blocked, and there's Gagne. Gagne flipping that one ahead, McCabe handles. He gives it back to Leach. Now it's McCabe. Check. Primo just tipped it, but no one could get it for Philadelphia. And then McCabe sent it off. Andrew Puff stick into the Philadelphia zone. Ash lost it. Panikarovsky back at her. Primo got in the way. Robert might want to just stay in that net right now. He's having some adventures away from the crease. Here's Andrew Puff. The pass. Pila. Shot. Save that. Rebound sitting there. Everybody taken care of. But then Gagne and his clearing attempt at the strange hop. Loose puck. Again, the Flyers not strong and not clear the zone. Pilas carries wide. Around it goes. Flyers has some tired legs on the ice. The shot blocked. Here's Pilas again. Pilas to Nuendijk. Shot save this. And Gagne will clear. All the way down it goes. And Belfort will keep the puck in play. Didn't want the icing. Realized there were tired Flyers. The pass misses here, but it is not icing. Pitkin in back for Philadelphia. Gets to Janssen. Janssen. Bumped by Domi. Now it's Hanzus for Recchi. Back deep in his own zone with that pass. Pipkinen 
is then checked by Domi, and now it's Recky again. Hard up the wall. That one takes a strange hop. Leclerc could not clear, but he did do a good job knocking down the lead pass. Here's Pitkinen moving up. Pitkin into Hanzus. Hanzus, a wrister, and that one takes off and finds Glass. Kapanen darts it, takes a huge hit from Tucker, and he is hurt. Kapanen does not know where he is. They, should, they do not love play dead. Kapanen making his way back to the bench. Leafs move up, rifle shot, Sandbach's rebound, cut wide. They center it back out in front as Kapanen still trying to get to the Philadelphia bench. Fires trying to get to the puck, and here it is. Bird with a shot, fans on it as he's checked, and it's Recky the other way with McClare. Two on one, Recky with the puck. Recky, the wrister, save Balfour. Back the other way, go the Leafs. Here's Sundin. Sundin to the line, still has it. Lost it and picked it in. Will clear to center, and here's Runick the other way, two on one with the body. Runick with the puck, Runick the shot, he scores! He scores! Jeremy Runick sends the players to the Eastern Conference Finals. Sudden death magic for JR, and the Flyers move on. The crowd is quiet as the Flyers Get a victory. You know, they're trading two on one breaks there, but boy, there was a lot of concern for Sammy, Sammy Kapanen. Kapanen. He Absolutely. took a tremendous hit. And Primo's over at the bench right now with Kapanen. I'll tell you what, I, I, I just can't say enough about this hockey team. They were flat out, I mean, they were all standing around. They were just beat. And then all of a sudden, you got the opportunity to come back with a two on one. and. How about the shot of Jeremy Roenick to go upstairs over the shoulder of Eddie Belfort? It was a two-on-one. He had him on. He, like, what do you say, Doherty? Give it to an offer. All he says, shoot the puck when you got a chance. JR, 51st career, his fourth overtime playoff goal, and arguably the biggest goal of his career. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm really impressed. Look at the guys just huddling around Sammy Kapanen. What a gesture at center ice. And then the traditional coach's handshake. And these two, of course, together, the Canadian Olympic team will be together again with the World Cup team, Quinn and Hitchcock, and also the assistants. The players now lining up. That's Roberts and Primo. They did not necessarily have a lot of fun with each other during that series, but after all the wars, and boy, were there some wars in this series, they shake hands. This is one of the great traditions in hockey that they can put what has happened in this series behind them. And actually have the Leafs wish the Flyers well. This is a tremendous setback for the Leafs franchise. They built for this year for the Flyers. They're on to the NHL's Final Four for the 14th time in franchise history as they will take on the Tampa Bay Lightning. They're tied with Montreal for the most appearances in the Stanley Cup playoffs semifinals since the 1967 expansion. And I'll tell you what, that was one of the most entertaining overtimes you're going to see, of course, in the regular season, you go four and four. This is five on five, but it almost looked like four and four as the puck went back and forth. It was like a ping pong match. What, what you had said before, though, Jimmy, you know, these guys, they, they absolutely pounded each other for six games. A lot of big, solid hits. And then when it's all over, you shake hands and job well done. But boy, entertaining. And Jeremy Roenick, who had not scored against the Leafs in this series, Gets a couple in this game tonight. The big one, the game winner. Sean Burke, of course, coming in game five. The for two periods. Sundin wishing them well. I mean, Sundin poured everything he had into this game here tonight. He brought his team back, assisted on the tying goal by winning a faceoff, then forced the overtime. And so he'll leave a lot out on that ice surface. Let's have a look at one of the more memorable goals in Flyers history right here. Well, when you, uh, Aki Burke, makes the puck. Or a leech, rather, and so you now you got a two-on-one, oh. and that was on the glove side high. Ronick was going down the other side, and I don't think uh, Jeremy Ronick had any intentions of throwing that over. I mean, he saw a spot and he picked it. Watch this going, drawing the puck and then just firing it. Hey, you hit a water bottle goal to win in overtime to move on in the Stanley Cup playoffs. This is a moment Jeremy Ronick will remember forever. Tony Monty just wanted to make sure. <laughs> well, again, watch Belfour. Yeah, just high over the glove hand. He elevated the puck in the right spot. And not only a happy hockey club, but how about the fans back in Philadelphia? They're going to see more playoff hockey. Now they deserve it. Fans have been great in Philadelphia helping this team through the first two rounds. And so the Flyers destination Florida.
Central Florida, Tampa to be exact, the Tampa Bay Lightning, who've been sitting around waiting. Well, you'll have your hands full, Lightning, because this is one team with some momentum, the Philadelphia Flyers.